people in the woods. Christmas Eve, Frank and Laura Harrington, along with their son Richard, daughter Marion, and her boyfriend Brad are driving to Boston to celebrate the holiday with relatives. Frank isn't too thrilled about visiting his wife's family and they're running late, which makes him extremely irritated. After a few hours of nighttime travel, all passengers peacefully fall asleep. Frank tries his best to stay awake and keep an eye on the road, but soon he also starts nodding off. The car skids, but luckily, the family is okay, and Frank gets out to inspect the damage. Suddenly, Laura notices they stopped on an unfamiliar road, not the usual highway. Frank nervously explains that he decided to take a shortcut for some variety because he's getting drowsy on the highway. Once he confirms the car is fine, Frank gets back behind the wheel and continues the journey. Richard gets bored and starts cracking some crude jokes about Marion and Brad. Laura tries to calm her son down and suggests seeing jingle bells together to distract from petty squabbles. Suddenly, Frank abruptly stops the car and says he saw a woman in white dress in the woods. Frank tries to talk to the stranger, but she remains silent. Then Frank assumes she might have had an accident and steps out of the car to help. There's no cell phone signal in the woods, so Frank suggests going back to the wooden cabin they recently passed to look for a phone. The father asked his son to give up his seat for the woman, but Richard isn't too eager to walk along the deserted road. Fed up with endless arguments, Marion decides to get out instead of Richard and walks alone to the cabin. Frank makes the woman in white take Marion's seat, and Laura tries to talk to her again. But the stranger continues to remain mysteriously silent. Would you have dared to give a ride to such a creepy hitchhiker? Or would you be more concerned about your safety? Write your thoughts in the comments. Suddenly, Richard notices an awful smell in the car, but Brad dismisses it, thinking that it must be a baby. So no one pays attention to Richard's words. Frank pulls up to the cabin, and Richard immediately gets out of the car and heads into the woods to pleasure himself. Meanwhile, Frank and Laura explore the forest ranger's cabin. Brad stays alone in the car with the woman in white and tries to make a conversation asking her about her husband and child. Not getting any answers, Brad decides to tell her that today he wants to propose to Marion. However, he doesn't suspect that Marion walking along the road is rehearsing her speech about breaking up with him. Frank and Laura finally find a phone in the cabin and dial 911 but the phone turns out to be out of order. Suddenly, the woman in white says her daughter's name is Amy. Then she hands Amy over to the bewildered Brad, who wonders how the child can breathe under such a thick blanket. However, the woman in white smiles and says that Amy doesn't breathe. Brad is shocked by the strange jokes of the woman and decides to look at Amy. But instead of a baby in the blanket, he sees a creepy red entity. Brad screams in horror and his frightened cries bring Frank, Laura, and Richard running to the car. However, when they reach the car, neither Brad nor the woman in white can be found. Suddenly, Marion, still walking along the road, notices the passing hearse and sees Brad in the backseat, pleading for help. Shocked, Marion runs to her parents and tells them that Brad is being taken somewhere. The family immediately sets out to search for Brad. Frank drives at a furious speed, but they don't spot any car. Suddenly, he stops the car, takes a flashlight, and gets out. On the road, he discovers Brad's body. The family follows the father, and upon seeing Brad, Marion faints. Richard helps his sister into the car and then goes back to the parents to help retrieve Brad's phone. <coughs> Laura tries to call 911, but instead of rescuers, she hears a woman's voice begging for help. Back in the car, Laura tries to bring Marion to her senses, but the girl remains in shock. Richard, whom Frank tasked with dragging Brad to the side of the road, informs them that whoever attacked Brad clearly used an axe or chainsaw. He is also worried about the fate of the woman in white, but Frank believes they can't help her and suggests going to the police station. Laura thinks they should go back to the highway, but Frank is certain they will reach the local sheriff in just 15 minutes. Suddenly, Frank notices a sign pointing to a place called Marcotte, which he has never heard of and is not marked on the map. Unable to come up with a better plan, Frank decides to head there. After a while, Richard notices that there is not a soul on the road besides them, and all the clocks have stopped exactly at 7.30 p.m. 
He finds it very strange and speculates that aliens are responsible, but his parents don't take his words seriously. Suddenly Marion, still in a daze, starts singing jingle bells, scaring the whole family. Frank asks her to stop, but Laura hopes that it will help her daughter feel better and sings along with her. Another 10 minutes pass, but there is still no sign of Marcotte. Suddenly, Frank spots a black baby carriage in the middle of the road and stops the car. Richard gets out of the car to check the carriage and decides to scare his parents, pretending that something is pulling him inside. Nice job. That was dumb. <laughs> Laura asks Frank to admit that they are lost and suggests turning back. However, Frank is convinced that Marquette is very close, so he intends to continue the journey. What would you do if you got lost on a deserted road at night? Share your thoughts in the comments. Meanwhile, Richard tries to talk to Marion, but she doesn't react to her brother's words and continues to stare silently at one spot. Disappointed, Richard exits the car and suddenly finds that the baby carriage is back on the road. This terrifies the whole family. Frank pushes the carriage off the road again, and they get back into the car and continue driving. Laura finds it very strange that during the entire journey, they haven't seen any towns, motels, or gas stations. Frank speculates that they are driving on one of the closed forest ranger roads, but it doesn't reassure Laura. Frank, annoyed, decides to turn on the radio, but instead of music, they hear creepy children's screams, horrified. Frank immediately turns off the radio and blames his wife for having to suffer every Christmas because of her relatives. Anger overwhelms Frank and he hopes to get off this cursed road as soon as possible. However, they suddenly get a flat tire and Frank breaks sharply. Unexpectedly, Marion confesses that she is pregnant and Richard reveals that he's been fooling around with fun cigarettes. Frank decides to distract himself from the ongoing shocks and goes to change the tire. Richard goes back into the woods to relax and smoke. Suddenly, the woman in white appears in front of him. She kisses him, biting his lower lip, and then scares him even more. Meanwhile, Frank finishes the task and calls for Richard to continue the journey. Suddenly, the hearse appears on the road again, taking Richard away this time. The family tries to chase the mysterious car, but to no avail. Soon, they find Richard's body on the road. The horrifying sight shocks Laura, and she starts gradually losing her sanity. She rushes to her son and suddenly tells Frank that Richard's real father is not him but his friend, Alvin Rickson. Frank seats the distraught wife in the car, while he and Marion clear the trunk of gifts and load Richard's body. Among all the presents, Marion decides to keep only the shotgun that was meant for Laura's brother to use for self-defense. Frank and Marion get back in the car, and in the meantime, Laura completely loses touch with reality. Richard is dead! Oh good. We can look some pie. The family passes the sign for Marquette again, but Frank is no longer sure they'll find it. He fears that the woman in white will reach them and recalls a story he was told in childhood. Once, a couple was driving home from a wedding when they picked up a girl from the roadside and sat her in the back seat of their car. The girl was obviously in shock and remained silent. After driving a bit more, they heard a horrifying scream from the back and suddenly realized they narrowly avoided driving off a cliff. However, the girl was no longer in the car. Later, they learned that the girl's entire family got into a car accident at the same spot. Marion asked her father if he thinks the woman in white is also a ghost, but their conversation is interrupted by Laura, who has gone insane and continues to gorge herself. Soon, they have to stop again as Laura feels unwell from overeating. While Frank and Marion talk, Laura finds the shotgun and, thinking it's a toy, points it at Frank. <laughs> After being wounded in the leg, Frank rides in pain. Marion treats the wound and removes the pellets, and the family sets off again. The daughter scolds her father for drinking while driving, but alcohol is the only thing that helps him cope with the pain. Frank wonders why they still haven't reached Marcotte. Suddenly, he has a hunch that they have been driving on a military road, and Marcotte is a military base, which is why it's not on the map. Marion calms down a bit and falls asleep. After a while, she wakes up and finds that they have stopped again, and her father is missing. She screams and rushes out of the car, but fortunately, Frank is okay. He tells his daughter that he has figured out they have been heading west all this time and that they should soon reach the sea, and thus, Marcat. Suddenly, Laura exits the car and tells Frank that she knows about his affairs. Then, she starts seeing people in the woods. Inside the car, Laura continues to see unfamiliar people, whom she believes are greeting her. She happily waves to them and asks Frank to slow down. Suddenly, among the apparitions, she notices Janie, her friend who passed away about 20 years ago. Frank tries to reason with his deranged wife, 
and explains that there is no one in the woods, but Laura doesn't believe him and wants to go to see Janine. I'm gonna go now. Frank stops abruptly, and he and Marion immediately get out of the car, but Laura is nowhere to be found. Suddenly, in the distance, they spot the same hearse. Enraged, Frank grabs the shotgun and shoots at the car, after which it reverses, and instead of the car, Laura emerges from the darkness. Frank and Marion find a huge wound on the back of her head. Laura continues talking as if nothing happened, but soon she collapses and, delirious, departs from the world of the living. Devastated by grief, Frank grabs the shotgun and is about to use it, but Marion begs her father not to do it, as she has no one left but him. Frank lowers the shotgun, but grimly states that the woman in white will eventually catch up with them. Marion tries to convince herself and her father that everything will be okay and insists that they need to keep going without stopping, so the woman in white can't get to them. Marion takes the wheel from Frank, and they continue with Laura in the backseat. Frank keeps drinking, but Marion snatches the whiskey bottle and throws it out of the window, claiming that alcohol only intensifies their fear. Frank notices that they should have reached the coast already, but Marquette is still nowhere in sight. Suddenly, he realizes that they don't have to go to Marquette to get out, and he suggests walking through the woods. They leave the car on the road and, battling their fears, venture into the forest. Frank stumbles upon a barbed wire fence, and they spot a distant light. Hopeful, they head towards it, but soon they are disappointed. An enraged Frank notices that the car's headlights are on, and he can't understand who did that, just to be sure. He checks with Laura, but confirms that it wasn't her who turned on the lights. They return to the car, and Frank decides to make a list titled, Things I Want to Do When All This Is Over. However, they abruptly stop again and find themselves back at the same wooden cabin where they first encountered the woman in white. Frank sends Marion to fetch the flashlight, and he searches the cabin again. Suddenly, the woman in white appears behind him. Marion rushes to her father's screams and calms him down. They return to the car, and Frank suddenly remembers his whiskey. Marion reminds him that she threw it away, and Frank flies into a rage and beats her until she loses consciousness. Within seconds, he realizes what he has done and puts Marion back in the car. Then, he spots the woman in white in the woods and grabs the shotgun, chasing after her. Soon, Marion regains consciousness and notices numerous creepy shadows surrounding the car. She also hears a woman's voice from outside, informing her that her father is already dead. Terrified, Marion gets behind the wheel and drives away, but the car soon runs out of fuel. Marion is forced to continue on foot, and after a while, she discovers her father. The girl desperately pleads with the woman in white to stop playing with her and suddenly finds the bodies of her family in black bags on the road. Then a black Cadillac pulls up and the woman in white appears, saying that Marion is not needed by him. The stranger gets into the Cadillac and drives away. Suddenly, a bright light hits Marion from behind. She turns around and we see the accident scene again. After which Marion wakes up in the hospital. She was in a coma for a few hours, but now she and her baby are fine. It turns out that when Frank fell asleep at the wheel, he crashed into an oncoming car with a mother and child. No one survived except Marion. The man who reported the accident thanks Dr. Ellen Marcotte for everything she did and offers to drive her in his black Cadillac. Meanwhile, workers are clearing the road of wrecked cars and suddenly find Frank's burnt note, which has two points, buy an Atari and be the coolest grandfather ever. It was the movie Dead End. I think the creators did a great job of conveying the creepy and hopeless atmosphere. Despite the comedic element, I wouldn't want to experience something like that, even if it were all happening in my head, but maybe it really happened. After all, Frank's note was found after the accident. What do you think? Did this nightmare really happen to the characters, or was it all just in Marion's subconscious? Let's discuss it in the comments.